Malarena, a nuclear scientist, and we are here to welcome you on our Nuclear Emergency Preparedness Seminar. So for our seminar, I am joined with my colleagues that will present each individual part related to nuclear emergency preparedness. So for our introduction, here is Dr. Nisha Nazarena. Good day. So first and foremost, it is crucial that we guard our understanding of the explanation of why this disaster happens. Therefore, I now introduce you all to nuclear radiation. So, as you can see in the presentation, there are two types of nuclear radiation. First, non-ionizing radiation. It is a lower energy radiation that is not energetic enough to detach electrons from atoms or molecules. Meanwhile, the ionizing radiation has the ability to detach electrons from atoms which can cause changes at the atomic level when interacting with matter including living organisms. So, so in the electromagnetic spectrum, non ionizing not ionizing radiation include the visible light, infrared, microwave, radio and cell phones, and power lines. On the other hand, ionizing radiation include ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma ray. We must keep in mind that ionizing radiation is the type of radiation that we must be wary of because too much exposure to it can be detrimental to our health. In this seminar, we will focus on ionizing radiation, so let me explain to you simply the types of ionizing radiation. Um, to discuss the different particle beams, firstly, the alpha radiation is when helium nuclei are ejected from a nucleus, and if we happen to inhale, eat, or drink alpha emitting materials, it can greatly damage our health. Next. Beta radiation is when electrons are ejected. And then gamma rays, such as X rays and Y rays, are generated outside a nucleus or emitted from a nucleus. Gamma rays are intense, have an intense impact on the human health. However, this can be avoided by doing certain measures, such as having thick walls in a gamma ray room. And lastly, neutrons. Neutrons are uncharged and unable to produce ionization. However, their interaction with the atoms are what produces alpha, beta, gamma, and x-rays. Now, let me call on Dr. Samuelson to give you a background of one of the most prominent nuclear events in history. Hi everyone, I am Dr. Samuelson and I am here to present the historical event that happened that is related to nuclear disaster. Chernobyl disaster, it is um, a nuclear disaster considered the worst one. It happened in the Ukraine in April 1986 and the nuclear power plant has four reactors. This, the event or the disaster um, started in the nuclear, four, nuclear reactor 4 and it is caused by human error performed by the technicians at the reactor. On April 26, 1.23 a.m., the chain reaction occurred and it started from explosions. Radioactive materials were released from the reactors to the atmosphere. It caused the partial meltdown. The government think of a solution that will help reduce the radioactive materials in the reactor. They used robots in attempting to remove these materials However, even the robots were not strong enough to conquer radiation. With this, they come up with a solution of sending humans called biorobots. Well, they are humans still, but they, are, they were dehumanized in order for the government to say that they did not involve humans to reduce or remove the radioactive materials since they are dead. They are um, assigned to remove these materials in only 90 seconds per person. However, each person goes back to the reactor 
five times. So, 19 cents times five and everyone was dead. The disaster was covered up by the government which is more lies because of the danger of the radioactive emissions. However, 30,000 inhabitants were able to evacuate the Pripyat Green. Two people died initially from the explosion and there is a recorded data that between 50 to 185 million curious were emitted. Up to this day, the nuclear power plant is still radioactive and even the areas around it has still radioactive materials that are going around the atmosphere. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Janelle and I am here to present to you what causes nuclear disasters or what are the main causes of nuclear disasters. So the historical nuclear related disasters discussed earlier by Dr. Kate would not be his considered historical without the real cause of why it has happened. Most nuclear disasters are closely connected with nuclear meltdowns. But first, what is a nuclear meltdown? According to Warner, 2011, a nuclear meltdown is an accident resulting from severe heating and a lack of sufficient cooling at the reactor core. In other words, a nuclear meltdown takes place when a cooling system, which is usually water, fails to cool the fuel rods that contain radioactive materials. If radioactive materials are not cooled and overheat, it will melt and result in a nuclear meltdown. Next slide, please. So here is a diagram of a nuclear meltdown. So this is a normal operation. And this is the worst case scenario or when a nuclear meltdown takes place. So you can see that there is a containment chamber. This is the fuel rods and this is the cooling system or the water. So when a cooling system fails to supply the fuel rods with water, the fuel rods will overheat and it will result in a nuclear meltdown. So a nuclear meltdown can be expounded more with an example using an ice cube and a freezer. Let us say that the freezer is the containment chamber and the one that acts as the cooling system. On the other hand, the ice cube is a radioactive material that should not be exposed to high temperature for the reason that it will melt. Therefore, if the freezer if the freezer runs out of power, that is electricity to keep it functioning, it will fail to keep the ice cube frozen, resulting in a meltdown. Most of the nuclear related disasters took place due to a failure in cooling systems. You might ask if a nuclear meltdown is also the same as an explosion. No, it is not. Although its side effects may cause explosions similar to what the Fukushima Daiichi power plant in Japan. So for the effects of the radioactive materials to one's health and safety, here is Dr. Omar to present it. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Omar and I'm here to present the different effects of this disaster to our health and safety. The effects of this disaster to our health and safety depends on the amount of dosage that we're exposed to. For a high level of radiation, we can have immediate health effects, such as skin burns, nausea, and vomiting. These are all attributed to what we call radiation sickness. If not treated instantly, this can result to death. On the other hand, we have low level of radiation. It does not provide immediate health impacts, but can provide long-term damages to our health and safety. This means that even if it does not provide immediate health effects, we should still not neglect this type of radiation. One example of its effects is that it increases our risk of getting cancer. This occurs because it damages or mutates our DNA or our genes. Despite all of those effects, do not be scared because we have different preventative measures that we can perform. But what are those? Those are those will be explained by Dr. Micaela. Hi everyone, I am Dr. Micaela and today I'm going to discuss the preventative measures before and during a nuclear meltdown. 
nuclear emergency. In the event of nuclear emergencies, it is important that we take precautionary measures in order for our property, our families, and ourselves to be safe. Listen here are some precautionary measures that we may do before a nuclear emergency. First on the list is to have an emergency preparedness kit that we must keep in the most accessible location in our house. In addition to that, we must establish a family evacuation or disaster plan. Next is to have a safe place where we can all meet or stay in case a nuclear emergency happens. In order to do this, we must ask authorities where are the public structures that is designated for follow-up shelters. And lastly, we must stay informed and monitor possible disasters in advance through different platforms for immediate notification within our community. Now that we know what to do before a nuclear emergency happens, we must know what to do during it. In order to be safe in a nuclear emergency, it is important that we stand by and wait for the alarm that serves as a cue to execute the acts. That stands for A is to alert the people and alarm the building, C is to call for help, D is to take action, and lastly, S is to show the authorities the exact location. In addition to that, we must pay attention to official announcements and follow the guidelines given by the authorities. If ever an attack warning is issued, we must take cover as fast as possible. And do not leave unless told otherwise by authorities. Furthermore, we must look for the nearest building that is preferably made of brick or concrete and go inside to escape from any radioactive materials. If it is not possible to go deep underground, we must head to the center of a high building instead. We must turn off fans, air conditioners, and force air heating systems that take air from the outside. It is important that we remain inside and spend at least 24 hours in doors, depending on the authorities. Once that we are inside each other, it is important that we keep updated and we must monitor guidelines in order to have a accessible communication with our bodies. Following a nuclear explosion, we must remember to practice three important things. First is to stay inside. Stay inside your house or building for at least 24 hours can keep you and your family safe. Always remember to listen for additional instructions for, from emergency personnel to help you find a safer shelter. Second is the deco decontamination. If you were outside during or after the nuclear explosion, wash your hands as soon as possible to remove any radioactive material that may have remained on your skin. You must also remove your clothing to keep radioactive material from spreading. When possible, take a shower with soap and water to help remove radioactive contamination. Lastly, take a shower with soap and shampoo. And now, coping with sheltering in place. Keep up with local news and social media outlets to stay informed. While seeking shelter, keep your emotional health in mind. And lastly, monitor your physical health care needs and concentrate on your immediate positive action. Hello everyone, Dr. Janelle is back and we are here for an interactive game and it is Modified True or False. So you are all invited to participate in this game. And if the statement that we will present on the screen is false, you will shout radio. And if the statement is true, you will shout active. Okay? So let us now start. So for our first statement, there are three types of radiation present. So is it radio or is it active? Next, an ultraviolet is an example of an ionizing radiation. Is it radio? Or is it active? Next, nuclear meltdowns are not the cause of most nuclear-related disasters. Is it radio or is it active? Next slide. For our fourth statement, an important preventive measure to take before any nuclear emergencies is to prepare a family evacuation plan. Is it radio? Or is it active? For our fifth 
this statement, turning off fans, air conditioners, and forced air heating systems that take air in from outdoors is not necessary. Is it radio or is it active? And lastly, for our last statement, it is important to decontaminate all exposed body parts to avoid radioactive contamination. Is it radio or is it active? Now let us know what score you got. That is all for our interactive game, Modify True or False. Thank you! Hello, this is Dr. Nisha Nazareno once again. And this has been the end of our Nuclear Emergency Preparedness Seminar. Me and my colleagues hope that you guys learned the introduction to nuclear radiation, the historical event which is the Chernobyl, the causes of the disaster, the effects of the disaster to our safety and health, and as well as the premeditated measures to do before, during, and after a nuclear disaster. That is all, and thank you very much for your attentive listening.